Safi is a very complex character. She's funny, sarcastic, and a little bit rebellious. She works at Caldon University with her mom, Yasmin, the school's president. She's a poetry writer who recently landed a book deal and is currently working in the graduate program. She does have a bit of a strained relationship with her mom, but they're mostly cordial at this point. The mystery itself is multi-layered. Safi leaves the rooftop after receiving an important call during a hangout with Moses and Max. Max goes to follow her, blacks out while taking a picture of an owl, wakes up to see her walking to an overlook area on campus, and then hears a gunshot. Despite hearing the gunshot, Safi is still walking around in Max's eyesight. But by the time Max gets to the top, Safi is sitting down on the bench already dead. No matter weapon found, no footprints, and besides the blood on Safi and on the bench, no other evidence of the crime was even committed. Max decides to play detective as she wants some closure on what happened to her best friend. Someone is leaving these random portraits for Max all around, but only in areas that Max would think to look, like in her home. Max decides to get a bit of information from a wide cast of characters, some that ends up being suspects and some that end up being allies between these first two episodes. Everyone has an opinion on Safi, from random Abraxas members to other faculty. Not everyone cares about Safi as much as Max did. Some people feel she's only getting this much attention because she was the university's president's daughter. Yasmin has gone so far as to cancel all on-campus events, including Krampus, which upsets some of the undergrad students. And even some of the Abraxas members have questioned why they're passing out roses during this time because they didn't even have a relationship with Yasmin to begin with. But I want to go over the list of suspects that I thought of so far and then people that I've ruled out as suspects so far just based on these first two episodes. So the first suspect is Vin. We meet Vin outside of Yasmin's office. He's currently Yasmin's administrative assistant, and he works in the grad program. He's also the president of Abraxas. In the first episode, he mentions that him and Safi don't really get along, and that they've had problems in the past because he had to intervene between Safi and her mother. In the second episode, Max confronts Vin about Safi's vandalized car, and he insists that he and the Abraxas members had nothing to do with it. He does give himself away, though, because he admits that the cow skull broke Safi's windshield, a detail that Max never told him. A hungover Vin is unable to get into his locked phone. Max is able to figure out the code and unlock it to find a very sexy photo of him and Safi in bed. That information shatters what Max thought she knew, because according to Max, Safi was never close to him. And according to Vin, he doesn't admit that they ever had a relationship. So it's interesting to figure out how they would have gotten from frenemies slash acquaintances all the way to being in a sexual relationship together, especially given Vin's personality. I don't like Vin as a character. He seems to be very sarcastic and egotistical and just he thinks too highly of himself. I don't think that that would have meshed well with Safi and her personality, but somehow he has this picture, unless it's a deep fake. The next suspect in this would be Dr. Gwen Hunter. She is one of the lit professors here at Caldon University. We first see her when she's taking a suspicious phone call in the Fine Arts Building, which she abruptly takes to her office after Loretta and Max come into the area. Max finds a letter in the mail room between Hunter and another student that the book in the library that Max helped Gwen steal from a locked case held a clue. In the second episode, when Max shifts to the to the universe where Safi is still alive, Gwen is being escorted out by security. When Max raids her office, she finds emails from years ago stating that Gwen used to be Mac Gwen used to be Safi's mentor and that she knew her back in the undergrad program four years prior. Gwen even encouraged Safi to get into poetry, to write her first poetry novel, but then some reason goes behind her back to get the book deal pulled by sending an email to her senior editor. Later, Yasmin finds video evidence that Gwen is selling drugs to students on campus, which is why she's brought up on a disciplinary hearing and subsequently fired. In my version of the second episode, I chose to save the USB drive that Gwen was originally going to burn when she got fired because I want to see if there is actual video evidence. Now, in this Up to this point, we have met Loretta. She's a sophomore journalist major who runs a podcast on campus. 
I don't think Loretta's a suspect. Given the fact that she is a sophomore, so she's in the undergrad program, she's a journalist major, so she doesn't really work closely with Safi or Max or any of the main characters, and she seems to want to work with Max to figure out what's going on. She gives us the connection we need about Maya Okada. So we find in the first chapter a book in the university's library written by Maya Okada. There's also a plaque and tree outside of the fine arts building dedicated to Maya. When you're in the the one time that you talk to Yasmin in her office, she has you pick three three photos of Safi to use for her obituary. And one of the photos is a picture of Safi sitting near the memorial tree that was dedicated to Maya. Loretta lets us know that Maya used to be an um, employee of the university, and she was an author who published the book we found in the first chapter. But unfortunately, Maya ended up killing herself some years back, and it was ruled a suicide by the police. Loretta is starting to think there's some sort of connection. Two students at the same university who are both writers who mysteriously commit suicide. Is there something there? For that reason, I don't think Loretta's a suspect. It sounds to me more like Loretta is just nosy, has a lot of free time on her hands, and wants to break this on her podcast. I also don't think that Yasmin is a suspect. So Yasmin is Safi's mother. She seems very troubled by Safi's death and is angry that the police don't have more information. The police have suggested that Safi may have committed suicide, but both Max and Yasmin don't believe that's true. Yasmin genuinely seems to love her daughter and is very devastated after her death, to the point where she canceled all the classes, all the events, and even finals on campus so that she could spend the rest of the Christmas time staying on the police to investigate her daughter's murder. So for that reason, I ruled out Yasmin. The third suspect that I have is Lucas Colmanero. So he's a lit- another lit professor who also supposedly has a bad relationship with Safi as well. In episode one, Max tells Max is told by Moses that Safi hated Lucas and felt that he was pretentious. We can see a little bit of that in Lucas's personality and the fact that he's you know running around doing book expos and you know has a standee of himself up in the fine art building to promote his latest novel. Um, in episode two, when Max shifts to the universe where Safi is still alive, Safi's car was vandalized by a cow skull that was originally donated to the Snapping Turtle Bar by Lucas himself after a book reading. However, Amanda confirms that Lucas was not at the bar the night before, and she suggests this Abraxas Society that took the skull and ruined the windshield. Max confronts Lucas in episode two, where he says that he's estranged from his ex-wife and his son in this universe. His son accuses him of saying terrible things, like he's the reason why the parents got divorced. However, Lucas swears he never said anything like that to Robbie and blames so- Safi. In the past, Safi threatened Lucas that she would turn his son against him. Still not really sure what the root of their beef is, other than them having beef, I guess. Lucas was even going to get a restraining order against Safi, and this leads to a major decision point in this part of episode two, where you get to choose if you want to send Safi the photo of the restraining order or not. In my version of the game, I did. Because I. it's clear that Safi's not to blame. There seems to be this issue of people having duplicates or doppelgangers going on. And maybe that's because of the split universe or alternate universe power. Because Reggie thought he saw another version of himself Gwen has a version of herself and selling drugs on campus, and Lucas has a version of himself that's being rude to his son. So it's a little unclear um, what's going on there. So hopefully we figure out that mystery as we figure out what happened to Safi. Towards the end of the second episode, Moses confesses to Max that he stole Safi's camera from the crime scene. And so Max has to transform and go back and forth between universes to get it back before the detective searches his office. They both take the camera back to Max's house to look at the, the images in the dark room. There's only three photos on the camera. Two of them are from the rooftop where they last hung out as a trio the night of her death. And then the final picture is Max with the gun pointed directly at the camera. Moses assumes this means that Max killed Sophie and that's why she helped him get the gun back from the detective. I don't think that that's true. We, From our point of view, we were able to play Max. At the time that Safi died, Max was still coming up the overlook at the time that, that 
Safi was still alive. So it's like very interesting. I like this murder mystery aspect of it. I'm hoping that we get either new suspects or more clues. I know that in the marketing materials that was posted on the Life is Strange um, channel throughout the last week or two, they've listed out a bunch of suspects. I'm trying not to watch those. I don't want to have any spoilers. I want to actually play the game in real time and kind of guess along. So far, my strongest thought is really Ben. I know that's weird, but it's suspicious that they have such a secret relationship. Dr. Hunter was her mentor, and maybe she had a reason to pull the book. Maybe the book was plagiarized, and Sophie didn't really write all the poems. Maybe she stole poems from Dr. Gwen. I feel like Dr. Gwen would have to have a reason to sabotage her book in that way. Lucas just seems like he's silly. Like, it seems like he's just having you know, midlife crisis because he's divorced. I don't think he's a murderer, though. I don't think he'd risk everything he worked for when he wants to be famous and have notoriety so bad. But Ben could easily do it. He's a prankster. He's the head of Abraxas where he has all these flunkies around him who will do whatever he says. And he thinks he's untouchable. He thinks he has a lot of power because he works as the admin assistant for Yasmin. So he gets to see a lot of important information about the university, the professors, and what's going on on campus. And so maybe, you know, Safi said, I don't want to have a relationship with you. Or she cut off their sexual relationship and he got mad and shot her. I mean, that's very possible. Or the Max angle, which is in the other universe, Max kills her for some reason. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this murder mystery and what clues did you discover through your playthrough?